uh, the bullet point that we were just talking about. And if we, if we end up deciding to, <coughs> to cut programs altogether because we can't do them cheaply and do them well, um, that's going to start zeroing in probably on some bargaining units more than others. Uh, fin finance, I almost called you I finance minister. Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, a finance director, <laughs> Elton here. Uh, I'll take a stab at answering that. And, and at this pre preliminary stage, it's, it's difficult to, to balance and identify just how all these pieces will fit. But I think that concept fits in under the second bullet point here about uh, adjusting service levels. And that, and that there might be some conflict between a couple of these deep when we get down to real specifics that we'll have to address at the point we're ready to deal with real specifics. But the the idea that um, it might be able to be defined as equitable, even if it does uh, affect one group of employees more than others, when it's based on a programmatic rather than a personnel type of uh, discussion and reason for the, the change or elimination of something. My, uh, my comments at this point in this discussion uh, is that we not move, we not support and encourage a reduction in services. And uh, I believe the county the county union asked for, at least went to the board and asked for a vote of their membership whether or not to move in the direction of layoffs or uh, across the board salary uh, reductions. And uh, I don't think because of the hard economic times we want to radically uh, eliminate the services we are currently providing to the citizens of Ukiah. Uh, the economy goes in peaks and troughs and uh, ups and downs and uh, I think we should do everything in our power to maintain service and I would, I would prefer that we look at um, across the board salary reductions rather than layoffs and so I think that uh, the second bullet here is actually included in apply personnel cost reductions in a method that promotes equity across all departments. To me, that deals with the issue of how much you can save if everyone took a 1% pay cut or a 2% pay cut. At my, uh, at my school, we're looking at a 5% pay cut across the board. Uh, if, uh, if we are able to convince the, the city that's uh, based on a motto that we're here to serve you, that it's better to, for the time being in the bad economy, to take a pay reduction and maintain services. Uh, that's my current bias. Uh, so I would, I would eliminate the second bullet and just include layoffs. They, personnel cost reductions would be, would, should include the concept of layoffs. Sure. Yes, Mr. Crane. I think the second bullet's a very important tool. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the key is general fund balance. The city has departments that are economically viable and we run the risk of reducing those basic services that maintain the viability of those particular departments. Our shortfall is in the general fund, that points to specific functions. I, I gave an alternative squeeze, to reducing squeeze, services. Right, but if we squeeze money out of electrical or water. That's or not what, that was not my recommendation. Okay. But I if we say all, if we say if we take it from all, that implies electrical, sewer, water, for instance. And that doesn't really solve the problem with the general fund. So I, I think we, I think they need two 
as a tool. Further discussion? Councilmember Landis. I just wanted to clarify what I said earlier about that bullet. I'm sorry, I'm, my energy is waning a little bit, but um, I was thinking if, we, if, if there is a broad uh, pay reduction across, uh, across many boards, across, I mean, across many people who are employed, probably all people employed by the city, I don't know, ma many people, at this point it's not defined, but I think what I was saying is that I think it should include city council members also. That's what I was oh, saying. I, I agree. Oh, as rel I as I it relates to a pay reduction, you did understand that's me. Okay, I didn't I know if I, I communicated that clearly, okay. Uh, city manager. I, I just wanna clarify that I think we've already done enough math to know that, that we can't, um, we can't close a $2 million with uh, just pay reductions alone. To, to achieve the 10% fund balance. Correct. The question is, would the, would the council be interested in something less than a 10% fund balance? Well, that's possible too. I mean, it depends on, but we're, if, if you give us these particular um, goals to work with, we'll work with these, at least as a start. I understand. Further council discussion on uh, budget guidelines for preparation of the 09 10 fiscal year budget. If not, we're, uh, council member I just want to reiterate that I think it's very, it's prudent and I'm happy to be considering a 10% reserve. I'm in favor of that. I just wanted to give um, kudos or I don't know what the proper word is for the, the um, team that came up with these. I'm sure it was a really painful process mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and difficult and um, but essential for us to, to move forward. And so I just want to express appreciation for these. And um, that's all. Yep. Okay, so it seems like we're moving in the direction of a reduction of services. Am I interpreting, interpreting the majority of the council correctly? Well, I would move uh, no, adoption of the recommended budget guidelines. Mm -hmm. Second. Right. Uh, public comment. My name's Monty Hill. I live in Ukiah, and I serve on the endowment board of the Grace Hudson Museum. And I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page with the museum. That museum started out with two paintings and no building, only the Sun House, which was given to the city. That was all deeded to the city at no cost. And what is there now is probably worth close to $10 million that was done by donations from the city, people in the city of Ukiah. And I think that's important to realize because I hear equity mentioned here tonight. Um, and I also hear how important historic buildings are and that you're willing to spend money to, to restore these buildings. And you have other things in mind, the Saturday Afternoon Club, the Palace Hotel, and here we are talking about a very historic building here in Ukiah that should be attracting people to it, and it does. There's a lot of visitors there every year. Somebody else is gonna have to speak to those statistics, but, but it is done, and it was done by the people in Ukiah. And what do I see here is that we want to reduce those services. And I ask you, why do you want to restore anything else? If you can't maintain it and keep it going, give it up. You know, this is, this is important. And that collection that's worth, the collection is probably worth close to $5 million. You are stewards of that collection. You know, that belongs to the city. The buildings belong to the city. And the people of Ukiah have donated the money.